My name is Nassim Hermain. Thanks for coming, all of you. We've got people from everywhere. Uh, Portland, <laughs> Ashland, um, Reno, <laughs> all the way from Reno. It's great. Thank you all for being here. So, um, today we had a big day. A lot. <laughs> A lot of information is going to flow through this room today, and uh, we're going to go uh, through all the physics from universal size object right down to subatomic particle, um, going through consciousness, ancient civilization, um, chemistry, biology, and so on. So. <laughs> We've got a big agenda. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And um, it's going to take a little time. So be comfortable. Make sure you are comfortable. Make sure you have enough uh, water to lubrify, lubri lubricate your brain. Uh, <laughs> lubrification. And um, make sure that... Uh, you know, if you have to, uh, you know, that you eat enough and all this so your blood sugar doesn't drop too too far. Um, sometimes I see people, you know, that I see smoke starting to come out of the ears. And then I know there's like damage being done. <laughs> so we'll try to avoid that today. Oh, okay. Um, maybe we can turn that down on the board. Which one is that? That one there. Low, 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 low. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Good. I've been having a little bit of trouble with my throat, so usually I just project, but today I'm going to try to be nice to my voice. Yeah, get good lubrification going. <laughs> so, go ahead. Um, the break schedule is when I see everybody's turning purple because they have to go to the washroom and stuff, then I'll stop. <laughs> Actually, if you guys are really exhausted and you need a break, you know, just let me know because I just keep on going. I just go and go for like 13 hours. So, you know, sometimes I forget about the crowd and so um, <laughs> oops <laughs> so uh, but in general I'm going to try to break around um, around 1 o'clock uh, or 12.30 and uh, and then we'll reconvene for a little more and then we'll have lunch around 2 and then come back and uh, and then I have the uh, the evening sessions we might be here for a while, <laughs> so uh, you know I'm, I'm I was asked to present a bunch of different things uh, today that I usually don't have time to present, so I'm gonna try to squeeze it in. Um, so especially uh, a section on the Knights Templar that I usually don't present. Um, so uh, I'm gonna talk real fast. <laughs> One thing that uh, that happens is that. When, uh, when I'm presenting this information, there's a certain amount of complexity. Uh, although the concepts are really simple, and you're going to get them right away, uh, there's a certain amount of complexity. There's a certain amount of rewiring that occurs from things that you've been taught and from, uh, from um, you know, just a new way of thinking coming in. And that takes a little bit of time. And what happens is that if you have too many questions that are unanswered, then it starts piling up. And uh, that's when I start noticing people turning, you know, white and, you know, it's like, oh my God, they're going to explode. And so, you know, because it makes like a dam of all the things that are not figured out. So I'm going to allow you to like um, interrupt me and ask questions, but 
it's gonna have to be like really, really crucial for you to interrupt me and ask questions. Otherwise, you know, I just get interrupted too much and it breaks the flow and it's really hard to get all the information in. So before you ask questions, please think about it or see if I'm gonna answer that question shortly after because commonly that happens. Uh, but it's, if it's really piling up and you just cannot go forward uh, in the thinking without getting those questions answered, answered please just uh, interrupt me. You can start screaming, you know, <laughs> uh, jump up and down or something. I'll get the signal. So um, I'm going to go through the information today in a little bit of a chronological way how I came up with it and how it changed my life and how my life evolved as the information evolved. And, um, and you'll see that although this information can get extremely complex extremely fast, um, the way I learned about it, the way I learned it, um, makes it easy because it was just a series of logical progression that I teach typically to even seven years old. And actually, some of the seven or older kids um, commonly after the talks come up to me and say, are you sure the other physicists don't think this way? And I'm like, I really checked it out. <laughs> I spent 20 years checking it out. They really don't think this way. And it buggles their mind because it's kind of obvious and it's kind of instinctive. It's not kind of instinctive, it's instinctive. And funny, it's a funny thing that like commonly now, they think of these thoughts as counter instinctive. But I think they're quite instinctive. And it, they got counter instinctive as a result of uh, confusion in the early <laughs> the early ages uh, when we uh, when we learn some of the foundations of our reality at school so that's really what happened I at the end at the age of seven I had a bunch of esoteric experiences and we're not going to get into that but I you know um, I had an intuition and I definitely had experiences that told me that there was something else than the reality we observe. That like the reality we observe is just like a little bitty part of what's going on. Uh, just like if you'd like the, the electromagnetic spectrum has a section that we see and then there's a whole bunch we don't see. And the part that we don't see has huge impact on the physics of the part that we see. And I felt that very early, you know, until they discovered, for instance, X-ray and infrared and long wavelengths and so on, they thought that all there was was the, the visible spectrum. And, you know, it became clear later on that there wasn't, that there was much more. And I think that it's becoming clear now in current physics that there is a whole bunch of stuff going on that we're not aware of that is actually generating the part that we are aware of. So when I was seven, I noticed this. I had experience that made me notice this. So when I got to the age of 10 and I got into my first geometry class and the teacher went to the blackboard and said, today we're going to learn about dimensions, I thought that's it. Oh my God, finally somebody's going to explain to me what's this other world about, you know, these other dimensions that I felt were present. And I, was, I got really excited. I was like, oh my God finally an adult that's going to talk about something real, you know, and <laughs> something that makes sense to me. So the teacher started the lesson and I got really, really disappointed. He didn't tell me anything about the dimensions 
that I was experiencing earlier on in my life. But he actually gave me one of the major keys to the evolution of this theory and to it, its uh, conclusion and then to its proof that is now being uh, peer-reviewed in many universities around the U.S. and uh, from scientists that are looking at it from NASA and so on. So it's really exciting. And that, at the age of 10, made a huge difference. What the teacher did is he went to the blackboard, and we'll call this our blackboard today, and he made a dot. And he said, the dot is dimension zero, and it doesn't exist. And I went, 